Hello, everybody. Welcome to LRM Rank Set, the show where we here at LRM rank our favorite movies, video games, television shows, uh, elements from those types of things, geek culture, pop culture, all that good fun stuff, the stuff you come to the website to uh, read about. And now you're coming to the website and the YouTube channel to watch about, right? Yeah, exactly. Today I am joined with a very special guest. None of you guys have ever heard of him before, I'm certain. He's a hermit. He hides out in a <laughs> hole in a wall somewhere, and every now and then he pops his head out to say hello to me. Uh, I want to introduce the world to Brian Brantley. Say hello. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian's a great friend of mine from uh, high school. Dude, we're coming up on, let's see, I moved uh, to Clarksville in 2000, right? Yeah. 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 You're a year oh, ahead wow. of me. So that was my sophomore year, your junior year. Y yeah. Yeah. Correct. Dear God, we're getting old. I know, man. man. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh, I just thought about that. Yes. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining us today. And um, today we're going to be talking about something really cool. Uh, we're going to be talking about Christmas movies. Yes. Um, do you like Christmas movies? I do. I do. I like all movies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? Exactly. I actually had to. I actually had to like beg, borrow, and steal to find somebody. <laughs> literally steal somebody to do Christmas movies with me, because the way I wanted to approach this particular episode of LRM ranks it is, a, uh, it couldn't just be set during Christmas time. They had to be Christmas movies. So movies that revolved around Christmas themes, whether that's a movie specifically about something like Santa Claus, uh, a movie that deals with gifts and family, you know, stuff like gift of the Magi and stuff like that. Uh, the theme of Christmas had to be very, very important to it. Uh, traveling home to see, uh, family, uh, family vacations during Christmas time, hint, hint, that type of thing. So, and so, so, so there was a lot of, so Batman, Ret Batman returns, does not count? No, Batman what? returns is not a Christmas it's movie. Not, it's not on my list. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, good. That's what I was going to say. Cut. Let's, let's yeah, take yeah. five and re-figure this out. Yeah. No, but uh, Batman uh, returns is a lot like uh, Die Hard. Yeah. And they both take place during Christmas, but Christmas is not really a theme I agree. for it. So that's kind of how I approached it. And there was a lot of people that wanted Die Hard. They told me if they couldn't put <laughs> Die Hard on the list to go fuck myself. So we're real Christmassy of you guys. Real nice. Um, so let's uh, look into a little bit about how we came up with the, our lists. Brian, uh, after I gave you the criteria, how did you approach it? Uh, what was it like coming up with your list? All right. I'll say four of the films on my list were always on my list. Like that, that was easy. It, it was actually the fifth film where things got complicated uh, because it, literally there was a dozen movies that I was looking at. And then, um, but the core four films, the first four, I, I knew off the bat. Now the order changed a couple times the more I thought about it. But it's crazy. I started talking with my sister about this list and she started naming films I'd forgotten about. And she's like, yeah, we used to watch that you know, when we were kids. I was like, oh yeah, we did used to watch that a bunch. And I went back and actually watched clips and, you know, from some of these films. And, and that was the difficult thing because it became a question of, do I look at this in terms of my childhood, uh, you know, my early 20s, present day? Do I look at the, the whole range of my life? You know, what, what is my top five? What is the top five Christmas movies, in my opinion? Um, but like I said, the, the top four... To me, I, I'm very comfortable, very happy with that. Very cool. Uh, I kind of had a similar approach. Um, I was looking at movies that, you know, I wanted to include things that I watch every year, of mm -hmm. course, because uh, yes. those are by far my favorite. Um, but I'm torn because there's more than just five movies that I watch every year. Uh, mm -hmm. There's actually, I'd say, close to about 10 that I religiously watch, you know, starting in October, November, and going all the way through Christmas time. Uh, and then there's uh, a few very specific movies that I have to watch uh, the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. And so I was looking at those movies. I was looking at what, you know, I don't think it exemplifies the right word. What really fits the criteria that I came up with and what really fits the spirit of Christmas. And another thing I had an issue with is there's a lot of movies that are variations on the same story. Yes. And so I was kind of like, I don't want to include too many that are you know the same story yeah. because then i'm basically saying this one story is all that matters yeah. and not the different movies that are out there so i tried to limit that uh the best that i could 
Um, for me, it was a little bit difficult. I knew what my top three were. I didn't know what order until uh, today. Actually, I was like, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta make this decision. I gotta pull the trigger and, and make this choice." And so I, uh, I had those three, but figuring out uh, five and four were were really difficult. And there's a movie that I left off the list that I just feel absolutely terrible about. And uh, I, yeah, I'm in a similar so. position. Yeah, I was, no. <laughs> like I said, that fifth slot became very difficult. Uh, a lot of films kept rotating, <laughs> and I was like, ah, I finally Definitely. settled on the one. Yeah, good stuff. Well, without further ado, since the audience is tracking everything, actually, one more thing, audience, make sure you guys uh, hit that uh, thumbs up button down at the bottom, subscribe, hit the bell so you can be alerted whenever we have a new LRM ranks it video up. Uh, they come out every Tuesday, and be sure to check out our website, share us on social media and all that fun stuff. We really appreciate it. That can be your Christmas gift to us, and we will give you great content like this as a Christmas gift to all of you. Uh, Brian, so I usually let my guests start off on these lists, so I'll stick with that tradition and go ahead and start off with your number five. All right, number five, The Santa Claus, starring Tim Allen. Nice. <laughs> yes. And this, this was one that I... It kept going back and forth between this and another film. Uh, at the and then I, I, the reason I settled on this one, I would like I said I was talking with my sister, and this was a movie that we watched every single year. She still watches it every year. I watch it usually. I'll watch it with her each year when she's watching it. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 the when I went back and I started thinking about it, also this film. More than, I mean, there's a couple you could argue, but this one does, I think, a really good job of capturing uh, the magic, if you will, of Santa mm -hmm. Claus and Christmas. And um, it actually takes the time to try and explain how it would be possible to uh, travel in one night and, uh, you know, give the gifts. Yeah. Even, you know, even from... How to be Santa. Yeah, they, they actually tried to think of, um, okay, he you know, the fireplace forming out of a heater and, you know, things like that. So, which I thought was cool, you know, even when I first saw it. So it's a great movie that you could show kids that, that uh, that believe in Santa Claus as a way to answer all those questions that they usually come up with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, it's a great movie. I actually have it on my list. It's a little bit higher. So good for you. We'll get to discuss a little bit more of it a little bit later on in the video. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and continue on, and we'll do my number five. Uh, both number five and number four for me are a little bit more adult movies. Uh, Christmas is for everybody. It's not just for kids. And there are some uh, after my son is put down for bed type movies that me and my wife like to watch during Christmas time. And one of those is Scrooged. Ah. Uh, yeah, Scrooge. Yes. Bill Murray's take on the classic, uh, what is his name? <laughs> Charles Dickens, yes. uh, Christmas Carol. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, it's a good take on Charles Dickens Christmas Carol. And, uh, I absolutely love it. It's hilarious. It's adult. It's foul. It's ridiculous. Yes. There's that great line, uh, where they've got the, uh, solid gold dancers and the sensors. <laughs> like you can see her nipples. He's like, I want to see her nipples. Yeah. They want to see her nipples. <laughs> it's yes. just, it's over the top and it's Bill Murray. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you have? Uh, it, it's yeah, it's on my list. So. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's the cool thing about Christmas movies, though, and especially amongst people like us, a lot of these, uh, you know, when I was doing a little bit of research to make sure I wasn't forgetting anything, everybody had stuff like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Everybody had stuff like uh, a Christmas Story. Everybody had uh, what's that other one I'm missing? Um, it's a Wonderful Life, yeah. uh, and a lot of people had love, actually. Blech, suck. I'm not a rom-com type guy, <laughs> so. Um, but a lot of people had those li those on the on their movies. I only remember one list having Scrooged, and that's I was kind of like, that's a, yeah, that's a really? classic movie, so. Well, that's cool. We get to talk a little bit more about uh, both of our number fives going on on the list, so let's continue on, and you're number four. Well, we will continue our Scrooged conversation because that is my number five. Oh, okay, because <laughs> that's where it is. <laughs> um, it's funny. I like you said. It's it's more grown up. Um, there, you know, there's some horror elements uh, in the yes. film. 
Yeah, really like it. Uh, and Bill Murray. If you, I mean, if you grew up in the '80s, uh, Bill Murray was a big part of that. You know, he did so many classic films, and this being Ghostbusters, one of them, Caddyshack. So, Meatballs. so I, I didn't look at lists. You, so you're saying Scrooge wasn't uh, on a lot of? Topics. I can only remember. Yeah, I can only remember one video that I saw it on. I only watched like. Four, okay. I think, and yeah. So a lot of people were focused on the more family friendly yeah, movies yeah, yeah. for certain. Yeah, I love Scrooge. Um, I didn't know. You know, I started all these films. I started digging into the the behind the scenes. I didn't know this was a Richard Donner film. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> cool. A lot of people don't know everything because whenever you hear Donner, the first thing, excuse me, the first things you're going to think of are uh, Superman. Yes. And uh, Goonies, Goonies, right? Yeah, Superman Goonies. Yeah, that's usually the first two. People don't think about stuff like uh, The Toy with yes, uh, yes. Richard Pryor. People don't think about Scrooge, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, um, not Howard Hughes, John Hughes. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's kind of like John Hughes. There's there's some movies out there that a lot of people don't really don't. connect with him. Yeah. But, but they're there. They're definitely there. Yeah. So... Um, well, that's cool. Uh, any last words on Scrooge? Uh, there's a lot of great one-liners in, um, Bobcat. has <laughs> some great. Yes. Great Bobcat Bob. Goldthwait is awesome in it. And the crazy lady in the control room who's got the hots yeah, for the guy yeah. that would play, uh, Lionel Luther in the Smallville yes. series. I can't remember the actor's name. And, uh, she's got the mistletoe over him. She's all bandaged up and like licking his face. And yeah, it's ridiculous. And who doesn't love the, uh, ghost of Christmas present? Yes. Like when she's punching him and kicking him in the nuts. Yeah. And so it's, it's hilarious. It's got great comedy. I also, uh, the only reason. Go ahead. Also, I also really like how, you know, they're making their own Christmas Carol production yes. within the film. And they're sort of poking fun at the fact that there are so many Christmas, yes. you know, like Christmas Carol is one of those things that everybody makes and they want theirs to be the biggest and the baddest. And you have Mary Lou. Everybody's got a version um, of it. Yeah. Mary as, Lou Retton. As uh, Tiny Tim. And, like, Tiny doing, Tim. Yeah. You know, it's just over the top. Backflips and, and stuff. And yep. this film Absolutely. has a very 80s feel to it also um, it does yeah, it definitely really, does yeah. but it's also which i like it's also it's also timeless well that's time. bill, well, bill murray's comedy 80s. yeah you know he, you know anything he did in the 80s you could watch today it's still funny it still yes. holds up definitely yep very good all right well let's go ahead and continue on with my number four and again it's a little bit more of an adult movie and that is national lampoon's christmas vacation mm. uh absolute blast of a film it's hilarious it's uh chevy chase and the guy used to be comedy gold um hasn't really done a lot recently uh i just started watching community no joke oh wow yeah i just started watching that (laughs) a week ago and uh it's a lot of fun it's pretty funny and chevy chase is pretty hilarious in there uh but christmas vacation is one of only two of the vacation movies i actually like i did not care for european vacation definitely didn't care for vegas vacation and i haven't seen the soft reboot the one where it's like his son rusty is taking his own family on a vacation yeah yeah but the original was great and christmas vacation was hilarious um not not yeah randy quaid's in it and he's absolutely just <laughs> that line where he's like, come on, Rusty, let's go find your sister. He's a pervert. Yeah. He's dirty. He's gross. The scene with the cat biting the, <laughs> yeah. the Christmas tree. <laughs> That's a great scene. Oh my God. And they, they like, they give the cat in the Christmas present, you know? Yeah. Uh, when, when his uh, old aunt and uncle or grandparents or whoever it is shows up at the house and there's like a jello mold in one gift and a cat in the other with one. Cat food on it. Um, <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. It's just, it is an over-the-top movie. Is that one on your list, too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is it number three? <laughs> it is not number three. Okay, so uh, that'll conclude my number four for the moment. Dear God, this is what happens when people are friends for almost two freaking decades. Yeah, true. Uh, <laughs> so let's go ahead and continue on, Brian, with your number three. My number three is... A Christmas Story. Nice. Yes. Not really. It's the first one that's not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> not on your list. That's interesting. Not on my that's list. I am not a. I'm uh, okay, not a Christmas. Okay. Story now this is good, I, and I want to discuss this actually right here. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. I you know I I have uh, people I have family members that hate this movie, 
And then I know mm-hmm. people that absolutely love this film. I'll say why I like it, and then I'm curious to why it's not on your top five. I like it because, to me, it it's a Christmas film from a youth's perspective, including mm-hmm. um, their you know how they talk with their friends, remin- uh, thinking about how they interact with their parents, um, that toy, you know, that one special toy that you know he wants that he doesn't know if he's going to get. Um, it literally chronicles the whole Christmas experience, I think, very well. Um, and yes, it airs every single Christmas, all day on Christmas. I usually go to sleep with TBS. I think that's what it's airing on these days. <laughs> yeah. On, and then when I wake up, it's playing. So I watch it every single Christmas. Um, but why would you not? Um, or is it, I mean, would it even be in your top 10? That's a question. No, okay. I, I'd never watch it. I've seen it. I've seen it several times and it just does not appeal to me. The, I don't know. I really don't know what it is at, at any given moment. I don't care about the story. I really don't find it that funny. I get that it's told from the perspective of, of you perspective yeah. of youth. I got that. And that's cool. And I understand the appeal to it or the appeal for it. Mm. It just doesn't appeal to me. Uh, the, you know, everybody laughs out loud about the dad breaking down when the leg lamp gets, you know, broken. That doesn't bother me. His obsession with the leg lamp doesn't I, I, there, appeal I mean, to me. There's a scene where uh, the dogs are in the house. It's not the end scene. It's, mm-hmm. it's earlier in the film and he, they slam the door and one of the dog's ears gets stuck in the door. It's horrible, but it, it I don't yeah. know. The timing on that is so funny to me. Every every time I see it, oh um, yeah, I don't I, know. It, it it is what it is. I you know you know me. Uh, there's several things that a lot of people like, and yeah. and a lot of people are supposed to like that I don't like. I've been called the yeah. anti geek before. I think you once even referred to me as something similar to that. Maybe with some worse language. I'm. I'm not sure, yeah. but uh, there's <laughs> there's definitely some people here at LRM that found out the other night that there's a series of movies that are near and dear to most people's hearts in geek culture, and I don't hate them. They just don't mean anything to me, so I'm kind of like in the doghouse on that one. <laughs> but that's okay. That's a discussion for another day. Um, now, yeah, it's just not my thing. Here's man. an interesting – like I said, I was re- when I was looking into these films, I started looking at the behind-the-scenes stuff. And I discovered, this is insane, yet again, another thing I never knew. The director of this film is a man by the name of Bob Clark. Mm -hmm. Bob Clark wrote and directed a film called Porky's. Ah. (laughs) I don't know if you, yeah, you're from... Porky's is considered by some to be one of the most over-the-top, vulgar, Mm -hmm. offensive comedies of of its time. And yes. this, it's insane to me. I, like, when I saw that, I couldn't believe it. Not only did he direct Porky's, he wrote it. The guy that wrote, pro, like I said, what's considered by some to be the most extreme example of a comedy film, also wrote mm-hmm. what is considered a Christmas classic. Not wrote, excuse mm-hmm. me, he just directed. He didn't write a Christmas yeah. story. Well, there's lots of uh, yeah, perverts out there that can... <laughs> but but you, you start, looking at, like you start Saget, looking at yeah. stuff like The Lamp, and you start looking at little things like mm-hmm. that, and it... You know, you start seeing, you know, okay, you know, some, I, I see, yeah, some of the adult stuff. I was see, to yeah, I, exactly, stuff, yeah, exactly. But yeah, that Definitely. that that was interesting. I didn't know. Yeah, don't care for it. I never turned TBS on or TNT. I think it used to be. I don't know. TNT it's on one of those. It's one of those Turner. T- yeah, and I thing. never never turned it on. It's it's one of those movies that I just. I wouldn't say necessarily that I hate it. I just, I nothing it. And I have no interest in seeing it. You'll shoot your You'll eye. Shoot I, your I, it I doesn't. No, yeah, no. It doesn't. I, nope. <laughs> the the tongue stuck in the ice pole. Nope. No. I, I see it. And I've tried. I've even tried in recent <laughs> years to turn it on and been like, okay, it's been a long time since I tried this. Mm-hmm. Let's see. And then I'm like, nah, I'm bored. I even, I even <laughs> like the scene um, when he goes outside and he, you know, shoots the rifle and it, you know, bounces and um, the BB mm-hmm. hits his glasses. I love yeah. that scene because on the spot he's creating this whole made-up story to protect his rifle. He doesn't want to give up his BB gun, 
So he's like, oh, you know, an icicle fell off the house. But it's like, mm -hmm. that reminds me of, you know, childhood. Like, yeah, there's several times where I would, you know, you make up a story or twist something so that you could get what you wanted or. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Definitely. Like I said, the whole kid aspect, is it's, I like it. But, I guess, sorry. I guess because I was such a perfect angel. You were, exactly. You my were. parents <laughs> that I don't know how to relate to such a man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if my parents watch this video, they probably yeah, just yeah, threw exactly. something at the screen. <laughs> you did it like you lied. You're lying now, you little son. No, I'm just. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, man. So, yeah, that's that's cool. Right. You know, I have a feeling this next movie might be on your list. If it's not, then this is where I hate you uh -oh. since you're already hating on me for, uh -oh. for a Christmas story. But, uh, well, before I go, any last words on a Christmas story? I'm done. Uh, I'm no. It. That's uh, yeah. I think I said everything. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, number three for me is the timeless classic. Something I think a lot of kids wanted to experience at some point in their lives, not realizing how much danger that would really put them in. Uh, Home Alone. Home Alone is my number three. Is that on your list? Yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Is that number two? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, Home Alone. Absolutely love it. It's a great movie. And I, I, like I said, every kid at some point wanted to make Rube Goldberg machines into traps. They wanted to uh, be left alone from their parents thinking that they could also survive. Uh, I mean, these, these are some of the things that went through my mind when I first saw the movie as a little kid. Um, and it's one of those movies that I think gets overlooked a lot. Um, it was on a couple of the lists that I watched, hmm. uh, on YouTube and it wasn't on a couple of the lists that I watched. And it's one of those that, uh, there was an argument I had with somebody about whether or not it really was a Christmas movie. I'm like, how is this not a Christmas yeah. movie? They're going on a Christmas vacation. They got the whole family together for Christmas time. There's a kid left alone on on you know basically for christmas he's dealing with robbers who are robbing christmas gifts i mean this is what isn't christmas about this he even goes to see santa claus yeah. you know um i don't i don't see what's not christmas about it it's a great movie uh it's fun i mean what what is there is there anything wrong with home alone brian can you think of anything I, wrong well with home alone? I, I, i'm glad you worded that question that way i as far as a from a script point of view, it's a it's solid. I mean, the movie from beginning mm -hmm. to end, from 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 the main character, from the the villains, uh, like you said, the the and the Christmas theme is is absolutely there. The end of the film is all about family and and being together. The the neighbor, you know, that the kids are all afraid of reuniting with his son. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's absolutely a Christmas film. Um, yep, absolutely. Well, do we get to continue this on, yes, or is we, that going to be even to higher on your list? Get, okay, yeah, cool. So let's <laughs> let's continue on with with uh, Home Alone. <laughs> um, as you said, you were bringing up John Hughes earlier. Uh, wrote this. Yep. Uh, you know, didn't know that <laughs> until I was looking at that, and that's and that's bizarre. I mean, you know, and go ahead. directed by Chris Columbus, right? Yes. Yep. Um. But this film, there's all. I mean, there's a lot of things in this film I really like. Yet again, doing from the kids' point of view, uh, not being afraid to use a little profanity or be a little edgy mm -hmm. here and there. Uh, a kid speaking like how most kids actually speak, um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> the the villains. I am a huge, huge Goodfellas fan. It's one of my favorites. It's mm -hmm. definitely in my top five of all time. So Joe Pesci. So love Pesci. <laughs> I love Joe Pesci. Uh, I love Casino. You know, another great film he's in. But the fact that he's able to be a villain in this movie and completely be a villain. I mean, that's one of the weird things about this he's film. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. And by the end of the film, it's crystal clear. They're, they intend to torture and kill this child. I mean, it's, yes. it's, they basically say it. The only thing he couldn't do yep. is be, you know, as vulgar as he, he would be in yeah. any of his other films. But yeah, the, it, they take a, they take these two villains who are really bad guys who are going to do horrible things, 
they they do make them a bit cartoony, which I like. They do it in a very mm-hmm. uh, they do it in a good way. Um, almost the slapstick almost, is almost awesome. a Looney Tunesy type mm-hmm. uh, humor, but but they don't cut away from like the horrible things that happen to them. You know, from Mm-mm. stepping on a no. nail to um, the hot burn. handle. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah, that all, one. All that yep. stuff. Yeah, yeah. The the burn looks. I mean, even by today's effects, it looks horrible. <laughs> like actually, it looks yeah. painful. <laughs> it's really, you know. Great scene. Um, John Candy is another a yep. great cameo or a series of cameos in this film. Are yet again relating to the whole family thing. You know, there's a lot of dialogue when they're traveling, where they're talking about mm-hmm. family and you know the importance of it. And like I said, great Christmas film. Yeah, man, do I miss John Candy? That yeah, was agree, that yes. was a guy that y- y'all should I do. Would uh, love to see y'all should do a top five John Candy <laughs> list. Well, we just discussed, me and uh, contributor Nick Dahl just recently discussed some other types of rankings to do. So uh, look in the future. Stuff like that with similar actors, maybe even similar director or, you know, a director's top five is is in the works. He, so uh, he's really good in this film. And he's he's one of those guys that I think maybe the newer generation aren't mm-hmm. as aware of. Um, yeah, you know I, I, mean? I would say that they might know Spaceballs or Uncle Buck, would, but yes. they're not going to know stuff like uh, Summer Rental. Exactly. And so, yeah, yeah, but yeah, he's great in this film. Everyone's great in the movie. And uh, but yeah, good movie. It put it put Macaulay Culkin on the Absolutely. map for two of these, and then he kind of disappeared. Yeah, his brother did some stuff. His brother was in Signs and Scott Pilgrim versus the uh-huh. World. Good thing. And that movie forty three, that that like sketch comedy movie, Macaulay Culkin's great, uh, The Good Son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember The Good Son. And then there's that one where he plays an adult version of Kevin McAllister. It was like a YouTube video, and that was pretty funny. Richie Rich, um, I enjoyed that. Yeah, he was he. <laughs> yes. yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yeah. Okay, so you had a few more than I can. That's how forgettable those those were. <laughs> I didn't care for The Good Son. Maybe it's because it I was too young when it, it came out, and I was just kind of like, eh, It used to come on HBO a lot, so that's mm-hmm. that's where I used to see it all the time. Okay. Well, going into my number two, I've got your number five, The Santa Claus. Wow. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely love that movie. Like you said, the magic. I miss that feeling as an adult. <laughs> As an adult, Christmas starts losing some of that magic. You still have fun with it. I like decorating. I'm not one of these obsessive people that gets into lighting competitions or anything like that. But I like yeah. to make the house look Christmassy. Um, you can see some stuff I put on my my wall behind me. And um, I do. I like Christmas stuff. But this reminds me of what it was like to be a kid and feel that magic of waking up in the morning uh before you find out certain truths about Christmas, mm-hmm. um, there's, there's the best word for it is magical. Yeah. And the Santa Claus really covers that. Um, now that I've got a, a kid of my own, you know, my son just turned five. Uh, he loves Christmas. When we took down the decorations last year, he was really upset. He's like, no, Christmas is never coming back. It'll <laughs> never be. It was just, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. And, uh, we approach Christmas a little bit differently with him to prevent certain heartbreaking later on. Plus, I'm a selfish person, and I want the credit, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> right now, there's parents watching this, or people are, you're a terrible parent. No, 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 no. No. I remember what that heartbreak was like. I really don't feel like putting my son through that. Yeah. And we still managed to make Christmas as magical as possible, to make it as unique and special as possible without that particular element. You catching my drift out there, everybody? Um, but hey, if you do it, it's it's fine. Go for it. I I don't I don't hold anything against anybody that does uh, that. And just like I don't think anybody should hold it against anybody that doesn't do that. It's it's absolutely fine. Christmas is whatever you want it to be out there. And the Santa Claus, but the Santa Claus is one of those movies that I absolutely love. It does it does feel like. One of the best Christmas movies out there to me, obviously, it's number two. And I watch it every year. Uh, I try to watch it Christmas Eve. Um, Scrooged is one of the ones that we watch after the the boy goes down. Uh, that's what we call my son, the boy. It's the nickname, whatever. Um, after, after my son goes down uh, for bed, we'll watch Scrooged. And um, 
Santa Claus is one of those I also try to watch. It's not really big on my wife's list, though. She really doesn't care for it too much. What do you think about that? You know my wife. Yeah. Anything to say to her? <laughs> <laughs> so, excuse me. Um, but yeah, that's that's why it's it's way up there on my list. I I love it. Yeah. It's it's a blast. Plus Tim Allen. Tim Allen's hilarious. I grew up watching Home Improvement. Yeah, me too. Uh, and there's there's some Home Improvement type comedy in that movie, like when he burns the turkey there at the beginning mm, of yeah. it. Um, the Denny scene. And is there's great. yes, <laughs> the whole Denny scene. Yes. All the fathers sort of nodding at each other. <laughs> yep. And then the the Asian business people in the corner, and yeah. just it's it's hilarious. And the Denny's is out of everything, and the North Pole looks really cool. The North Pole is exactly what a little kid would imagine the North Pole to be like. And uh, the elf Bernard, Bernard. is hilarious. Yes. Um, and Judge Reinhold in it. The whole time, every time Judge Reinhold's on screen, he, he eats it up. His psychoanalysis. The whistle. Uh, when, the whistle is, is a great story. And it's just ridiculous because yeah. you're like, of all the things that you wanted, all the things that broke your heart and, and let you know the truth, it was a, a Oscar, Mayer Oscar Mayer weenie whistle. And I just got to say weenie on YouTube. So, yay. <laughs> so, uh, that's enough on the Santa Claus, man. Any last words on it from you? Uh, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just really good. Like you said, uh, magic. Uh, that's the best word, I think, to describe it. Sort of capturing the magic. The magical idea of what it, a Santa Claus and uh, that whole idea. It does a good job of that. Definitely. And like I said, you know, it's it's one of those movies when kids are asking questions about Santa Claus, you can, you can like show them this. that movie yeah. and be like, this, this is like autobiography, kid, except for the part where Santa dies. That part didn't happen. But everything else about the fireplaces and the, the time and all. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Also, it. good stuff. Real quick. I also think it does a good job Go of addressing or dealing with the idea of divorce and, you know, which is, you know, very common. A lot, you know, a lot of kids are, you know, in divorce divorce yeah. situation so the idea of who who do you go to on christmas you know you're going back and forth between parents or whatever and just the fact that's that, a good point you know the film really touches on that and does a good job of showing you know just because there's two different households both parents you know love the child and try to do what's best for yeah. the child and i think the movie and it shows that not everybody's got a perfect you know united family yeah, yeah. not everybody's got a an ideal home life and that that's okay and that they can have Christmas exactly. too. That Christmas is for everybody. Yeah. So, you know, everybody that wants it to be. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good point, Brian. Way to go. Uh, so, before we get into our number one, I do want to uh, do the business thing of plugging. Everybody knows that the LRM Ranks videos come out every Tuesday. Uh, we also have our video series from Stefan White. I'd buy that for a dollar. That comes out on Thursday. So, be sure to check those out. Uh, if you guys like podcasts, uh, both. LRM ranks it and I'd buy that for a dollar. The episode that comes out this week will be on audio next week. So this episode's out today, Tuesday, next Tuesday, it'll be out on our podcast channel, uh, underneath the Los fanboys, uh, banner. And also be sure to check out that podcast. Uh, the boss man runs that Los fanboys on Fridays. Uh, have a lot of fun with that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Brian, your number one, Christmas movie. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That is number wow. one. Wow. Yeah, number one. Nice. Number one. Good, because, uh, you know, my number one is something completely different. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, so, like I was, you know, saying how uh, Christmas Story covers it from the kid's point of view, this film covers it from the adult's point of view, <laughs> and it captures it it's so brilliantly. a good way to look at it, yeah. It captures it brilliantly, and... The, I mean, every aspect, it, like, I mean, you talked about it a little bit earlier, but from family visiting or you visiting family, all the craziness that comes with that. Um, arguments, e arguments and arguments, fighting. And... fighting. Yet at the same time, you know, everybody, you know, you all love each other and, you, you know, you want to be together on the holiday, but you don't necessarily get along all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and then you, everybody <laughs> has that um, Randy Quaid type character, you know, that cousin Eddie. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you know, family visiting, and maybe they're bringing their animals and having to deal with that. Um, oh the, God! The kids yeah. having to figure out who's going to sleep in what room, and having to, you know. Oh, I hated that stuff. And, and absolutely. And then, 
he, he slowly and uh, Chevy Chase does a great job throughout the film. He slowly is going more and more crazy. Like all he's everything is starts building and he starts breaking down. And by the end, when he has the chainsaw and he's sawing the uh, banister on the stairs, like he's completely you know gone crazy. Um, throwing back to Scrooge, uh, his boss played by um, Bill Murray's older brother. Uh, Brian what is Doyle his, uh, Murray. Brian Murray. Yeah. Yep. Brian Doyle. Um, yeah. I just thought that was an interesting. And yet again, uh, the film was written by um, Hughes. Yep. You know, which wrote uh, Home Alone. So Christmas. Yep. Oh, a lot of a lot of connections with the uh, with the Christmas <laughs> movies. And now, now, now that I really thought was interesting when I saw that because I'm. I, John Hughes is, you know, famous for writing so many classic 80s films. Mm -hmm. And to think that, and I didn't know, I honestly, I didn't know this when I put together the list. The top two films, my two favorite Christmas films were written by the same guy. And, you know, I just thought that was interesting as far as my taste in film and, you know, his style of writing. Um, But yeah, great movie. Um, I love The Neighbors. (laughs) The scene when he's turning oh, the God, lights yeah. on and you know they're falling and everything yep um, yeah uh that they're just so angry at them all the time yeah. things are getting broken over at their house yeah it's it's great now uh, who's is it uh julia uh, yeah louis dreyfus yeah. Um, yeah. yeah she plays the female i can't remember the male actor that plays the neighbor uh that's that's kind of like a movie trope having a family um I don't. I don't know if it's really an '80s thing, but I can think of. I can think of a few movies where there's a neighbor that absolutely just cannot stand uh, their their other yeah. neighbor and the shenanigans that go go along with it. Um, another great example of that, um, kind of similar, where the the goings on at the primary house really affects the neighbors is uh, the Adams family, mm. which I recently saw on TV uh, during the Halloween time. So that was a good movie too. I kind of wish we had done one of these for Halloween. I don't think these these videos were. I think I was editing a lot of these videos that we had recorded, and something came up, and I couldn't do a Halloween list. But next year, look for it. LRM ranks best Halloween movies. Um, so yeah, absolutely, man. I agree with you. Christmas Vacation is a great movie. I like that point that you take. So uh, it's it's from the adults' point of view, yeah. and I can see that. You know, um, you know, both of my and uh, both my in-laws and my family are are there where you live. So we've been out there several times for Christmas and we kind of know what it's like to say, okay, are we going to go over here? Are we going to go over there? Splitting yeah. this up. Are there any other family members coming? And I can remember being uh, a kid and having, you know, similar conversations and it is a completely our similar situation. And it's a completely different point of view. So way to go. Way to show me up on my own show jerk see if i ever invite you on again (laughs) um no so that's great you're number one my number one's completely different and if i didn't put this as number one i'd probably be ousted by my own family uh it is the movie that we watch as a kid we watched every year after it came out we watched every year on christmas eve it's something that i've carried over into my own household even before my son was born uh it is one of a very few musicals that i like and it is the muppets christmas carol yeah was that one of the ones that you it was thought about definitely putting on the list? yeah i'll tell you after you we finish this part i'll tell you the the handful that were on okay. there but that is absolutely um was one of the films i was debating putting on my list it is. I'm not a big musical fan. I, yeah. I can probably name every single musical that I like, and there's there's not a lot. And it is it is such a great version of a Christmas Carol. It's got a little bit of horror stuff. It's Muppets, so everything's kind of funny. And you've got Gonzo and Rizzo as as the narrators, and they're breaking fourth walls, and they're they're interacting. Like one of my favorite scenes is when uh, Sam the Eagle is talking to young Ebenezer Scrooge, and he's you know telling you're gonna love business. It's the American way. And the narrator Gonzo goes over and whispers in his ear, and he's like, oh. It's the British way. And then he like looks for where the guy just went. It's absolutely hilarious. It's quintessential Muppets. Uh, it's 1990s. The Muppets had several movies that came out in the 1990s that I absolutely love. And this is, this is one of them. Um, the songs are, are classic. Uh, 
I mean, I know every word to them, except for one. Uh, I found out on a DVD version that I have, Bell, uh, Ebenezer's young female love uh, from when he was starting off at uh, Fozzie Wigs in this movie. Uh, her song is not on the DVD. It literally goes to where they're breaking up and then she walks off. There used to be a song there on the VHS I had as a kid. She has a song. It's no longer there. So I don't really remember those lyrics anymore, but everything else I do. Um, what are your thoughts uh, just in general on Muppets Christmas Carol? It's, it's great. It's funny. You know, a lot, a lot of those great Muppet, you know, type com- Muppet style comedy. Um, like you said, the songs really stick with me still. You know, a lot of them mm-hmm. I remember. Um, yeah, it's well done. And, and like you said, it's difficult. There's so many Christmas Carol films out there. Um, it's hard to, you know, pick your favorite, but yeah, it's definitely a good one. And how great is Michael Caine? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Great. I, I put him up there with one of the best Scrooges. Even though it's a comedy movie, he does a great... Kate, Michael Caine does a great job. And he doesn't... he does. He does... He plays the role. He doesn't... Um, yeah. He, in other words, he doesn't go into Muppet mode, if you will. He, he stays no, Scrooge, you, could, you know? You could take his performance and exchange it into a yes. more serious uh, Christmas story movie, and he really wouldn't have to change much of the performance. I agree. Uh, where he interacts with uh, Robert and Jacob Marley, and, I mean, there he's he's frightened. He's not playing slapstick no. whatsoever. No. Um, my dad really loves George C. Scott and his version of uh, it's, A Christmas it's a Carol. Uh, and his version of Ebenezer Scrooge. And I've seen it, and it's definitely a more serious take, absolutely. But I, I do I think Kane does the best job as Scrooge for for any version. I really do. I give it I give it to my, Michael Kane. Absolutely. He's Sir Michael Kane, isn't he? I'm sure. I think so. If not, he should be. <laughs> more than likely. Yeah, definitely. You hear that? You hear that, Queen? Queen? Yeah. Do it. Yeah, do it now. Michael Caine, sir, if he's not already. I don't remember. I don't they sir every British guy over pretty there. Pretty much. Anyway, <laughs> knight, sir, knight them. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, that rounds out the uh, top five. Brian, I'll give you an opportunity to pick one of those off of your list that didn't make it an honorable mention. What do you got as an honorable mention? Only pick mention? one? All right. I'll, Only one. Okay. One honorable mention. Uh, one honorable mention, uh, Elf. Hmm. Elf. Was, That's another one that would not be anywhere near my Elf top ten. Was, <laughs> Elf was very close to being five, uh, number five for me. Uh, it, it was okay. that, and there was a couple others, but uh, including Muppet Christmas. But uh, Elf, yes, big. I love Will Ferrell. I think uh, as far as new films, it's my favorite Christmas mm-hmm. film of the last decade or so. so there you go. Okay. My wife really likes it and uh, her family really likes it. It's not, it's not my thing. Uh, I'm not a Will Ferrell fan. Yes. Everybody (laughs) hating on me. And I just hit my microphone. I was trying to block the hate coming at the screen. I liked him on, uh, I liked him on uh, Saturday night live. I love a lot of his sketch comedy, but him just like even stepbrothers. Oh, don't care. for oh. I like John C. Riley in that movie, oh, but I don't yeah, like Will let's Ferrell. Not, let's not get into it. It'll be a long discussion. <laughs> Love that movie. <laughs> after after we after we get yes. off here, we'll discuss that. Yes. But uh, my honorable mention would be the the world famous transition as we're getting into the Christmas spirit, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. It is a movie I saw in theaters with my family. It was great. It's again one of those few musicals that I like. Uh, I didn't put it on here because I don't find myself watching it very often during Christmas. I watch it in October. I might watch it once more as we're getting closer to Christmas time, unless my son wants to watch it. But it's to me, it's more of a fall, even though Christmas is a very key portion part of it. Uh, to me, it's more of a fall movie than it is. A Christmas. I, movie. I agree. I actually, I listen to the soundtrack way more than I do mm-hmm. watch what than I watch the film. I like Danny Elfman a lot. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Both the singing parts, the score. Yes, yes. Are the singing parts cool. and everything, yeah, yeah, the yeah, very nice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let us know down below in the comments, either on the webpage or on this YouTube channel, if you're watching it there. Let us know what your top five Christmas movies are. Let us know if you agree with us, disagree with us. Uh, make sure you uh, 
hit that like button, that share button, all that good stuff again. And uh, be sure to check me out at that Kyle Malone on Twitter. And I also write this great Star Wars uh, column every Thursday. Man, I'm really busy getting things ready for Thursdays, but it's called the Cantina. Uh, I cover Star Wars news, rumors give you point, my point of view, and there's always a last call on there where I have a set of rotating topics where I discuss certain things every couple of weeks, uh, including like book reviews, game ideas, and uh, st something called Star Wars moments. So you might get an opportunity to share a Star Wars moment with me and I'll put it on the website. Be sure to check all that out. And as always, go to lrmonline.com for all of your news and uh, geek pop culture needs. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to check out some of the other great videos available here on our YouTube page. Also head over to lrmonline.com and check out all the great work that we put up there every day.